Dinksy, you're not in your normal spot. You're in your normal spot. Hi fans of High Quality Entertainment. I was inspired to do this video while I was at work yesterday listening, well, having to listen to the radio, but thankfully it wasn't the country, the uh, new country station, it was rock, classic rock. And I heard the song, uh, Street Fighting Man by the Rolling Stones. And <clears throat> it, I started thinking of this album. It's the very first Rolling Stones vinyl album I ever had as a kid. And so this is the album that got me to actually really like the Rolling Stones. So it's always been one of my favorite greatest hits uh, packages. And of course, Street Fighting Man is awesome. But, you know, it took me a few lessons to appreciate. And so I was going to do, you know, top ten songs I, I didn't like at first. And then I thought, no, I'm going to do albums. Top ten albums. But, I mean, there's lots. This is just ten. And they're not in, not really in any order or, any, or anything. It's just entertaining for some. And I would love your thoughts in the comment section below on some albums that, on first or you know second listen, you might not have hated, but you just didn't connect with the album, and you thought oh, it's not as good as their other ones, because lot that's happened to me a lot of times. So here we go: ten albums that I did not care for on first or second listen, and I, I grew to love the albums. Yeah. In the, in the late 90s, I listened to Pearl Jam quite a bit and bought some of their albums. Uh, the first one I had was Vitology, which I absolutely love, still love today. And then came No Coat, and I just, I just did not like it. And I remember my nephew didn't like it either, and he was a Pearl Jam fan. But, in time, we both grew to really appreciate this album. And, uh, it, along with Vital, Vital, well, actually, there's like three albums by Pearl Jam. I, I basically love the same. But, so many great songs on this. I think my favorite is In My Tree. And, uh, Present Tense, Mankind is awesome. Around the Bend. Who Are You? Just great, great songs. And then after that came uh, Yield, which I loved right away. And then after that, bin binar Binaral, I can't even pronounce it, which was good, but kind of disappointing after uh, Yield. And then I just lost interest in Pearl Jam. Uh, there's Backspacer, Lightning Bolt. I just never connected with those albums. Maybe I should re-listen at some point and re-evaluate re them. But Pearl Jam, overall, is a great band. I highly respect the Pearl Jams. Pearl Jams. I highly respect Pearl Jam. <clears throat> now, as some of you know, I've become a huge David Bowie fan the last couple of years. So I bought all of his albums, you know, slowly. And the only one that I didn't think I would ever like, not that I hated it, but I just, you know, I didn't love it like all of the others, is Heroes. I mean, the song Heroes I always loved, but the rest of the album, I, and, and I think it's uh, had something to do with the production, too. And I just did not connect to the songs. But that being said, in time, you know, this is one thing, you know, I, I know I have a lot of younger viewers. Don't ever give up on an album that you're disappointed in. Uh, take a break from it. Come back to it later. Some, I think some albums you really need to play a few times, and this is one of them for me. So I absolutely love this as much as uh, his other albums. And the... Uh, most of the second half is instrumental, and I think I, I like the instrumentals on this even more than the ones that are on low. So, great album. 
I was really, really disappointed in this the first time I heard it. I had bought their third album. With, the first one I bought was their third album, which I absolutely loved. I became a fan. I bought their second album, which uh, I was really impressed with. And then I bought their debut album, Blue Easter Cult. And I did not like it. I might have even hated it. But in time, uh, it took a few listens, but I love it as much, if not more, than all of their early, other early albums. And uh, Spectres and Mirrors, I even love more today than I did when they first came out. So some of these, I'm, you know, for you viewers that watch most of my videos, you've heard me <laughs> go on and on about some of these, but some of you haven't. I've always been a big Black Sabbath fan with Ozzy, but their last two, Never Say Die and Technical Ecstasy, I just thought were me mediocre, but I was wrong. I bought the remastered versions of both albums, and especially this one. I think I love this one a bit more than Technical Ecstasy, but all of the early Black Sabbath albums with Ozzy, I absolutely love now. And a hard road. I, I know I did, I think I did a top 10 list recently on Black Sabbath, and that was my favorite song, and I think it still is. <clears throat> this is the ultimate album where you, most, most listeners are not going to like it on first listen. They might really hate it or be totally confused or totally bored. It definitely needs, I would say, half a dozen listens to to get it. So if you you know if you're just a, a normal classic rock fan that's into ACDC and all that and nothing more extreme than that, then you're always gonna hate it. But if you're more open to music like I am, you know, Frank Zappa and anything, then I highly suggest you start listening to Captain Beefheart and his magic band, Trope Mask Replica, double album produced by Frank Zappa. It is way out there. But once you, the music is just so, it's really hard to explain, but the music is just so different that you have to program your brain <laughs> to, to, to listen to it, and then you will connect to it, hopefully. Once again, I've become, I've always loved, yes, but I've become a huge fan in the last two or three years. And once again, the only album that I could not get into was Going for the One. Once again, like uh, David Bowie's Heroes, it, it was partially the production, but also I just couldn't connect to any of the songs. And now I absolutely love it, and Awaken is, I think, one of the greatest songs of all time. And, uh, but all the songs are great. Going for the One, Turn of the Century is Beautiful, Parallels, Wondrous Stories, and Awake. <clears throat> and for you Yes fans, you've got to listen to Magnification, a later Yes release, because I think it's one of their best albums. Huge fan of this band, and when this came out in 1971, yeah, 1971, uh, do you ever buy an album and it's like you don't like it, but you try and convince yourself that you're enjoying listening to it? That, that's the way I was with Grand Funk's Survive for years and years and years. It was not my favorite Grand Funk album. Uh, but in the last year or so, this remastered version from a few years back, it is, I think it's my favorite Grand Funk album. So it just kind of shows you, you know, I'm just trying to show you young people out there, don't give up on music. If you, if you listen to an album and you don't like it, that doesn't mean you're not going, that doesn't mean you're going to always not like it. And they do a killer version of Gimme Shelter. Check it out on YouTube right now. 
after this video is done. And uh, I've talked about this artist a lot lately, and I've known of him for 50, over 50 years, and I've checked out a bit of his music and it just didn't interest me. And then I don't know what made me do it, but I just thought, you know what? This is regarded as some kind of great masterpiece. I'm going to buy the album and I'm really going to listen to it. And on first reel, you know, all the way through, because I, like I said, I sp sporadically listened to it and not liked it. Astral Weeks, uh, there, there's times I think it might be the best album ever recorded. That's how good I think it is. So, uh, and then I never knew he, he uh, I knew he sang, I had a brain fart. I knew that he sang, Have I Told You Lately That I Love You? And I know that he's a songwriter, but he, you know, he also sings cover versions of songs. But I never knew he wrote that. And, uh. I'm going to be buying more and more Van Morrison albums. I think I have six or seven at the moment. I could have chosen half a dozen of these of, of albums by this artist, and I chose Paul McCartney's Red Rose Speedway. I think it was partially reading from you know critics back in the day that it's not a very good album and my love at the time I thought it was like really except for the guitar so it was way too sugary sweet and totally changed my mind and I love this almost I think almost as much as Ram and as much as Band on the Run so uh, if you've always thought this album was kinda just okay Get the remastered version, put on headphones, and you might appreciate it at last. And finally, this is the ultimate for, uh, I think, th this is what, this album is what made me realize, oh, if I don't like this album, don't totally give up on it, come back to it at some point. Sparks, Kimono My House, 1974. I'd seen them on TV, and Back in the day, I used to buy almost any album, <laughs> and uh, so I bought, you know, it was so weird, I thought, I'm going to have to buy this. And I bought it, put it on the turntable, and I hated it, absolutely hated it, and truthfully, I threw the album in the garbage can. And later that day, what did I do? I picked it out of the garbage can, that's right, very good. And I became... I've been a fan ever since, so that's why you should never give up on, you know, listening to an album. I even uh, checked out Metallica and Lou Reed's Lou, Lulu album again on Spotify. I know it's pretty bad. Uh, but that being said, I listened to the first couple of minutes and I was thinking, this is actually pretty good. So, you know, I don't know, it's not that I, I don't think I'd have the patience to try and get into that album. And maybe it really is a bad album, I don't know. But, you know, that's it. I would love, I, mean, I really look forward to the comments on albums that you did not like at first or you just thought were okay and that you grew to become a big fan of. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.